Thank God. Now, and truly, when you find the Lord, you do receive the peace that's within. And we appreciate the Lord today for everyone listening in. Especially now, want to send the program out to the lost and to the people that's going through maybe trials and temptations. There's always a help when we turn the battle to the Lord. So we thank God. Now, I'm going to ask the saints of God to be sure to have your Bible ready as we get into the good Word of God today, and we. 
appreciate the Lord for the privilege of being with you by radio. And, and we're going to have another song and, and dedicate it now, as I said, to the lost, and especially to them in hospitals and nursing homes. And wherever these programs go out, we thank God for all of our listeners. And I uh, want to remind you now, if you can, tune in with us each Sunday evening at 2.30 to 3 on Living Faith Television, and also Sunday morning at 6.30 a.m. on WLEX at Lexington at 6.30 a.m. and also on uh, WYMT-TV out of Hazard and that comes on each Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning and, and also we have our program on the FM station of uh, WSGS out of Hazard and that's 101.1 on your dial at FM and it comes on at 10 o'clock, a 30-minute program, each Sunday morning. That's WSGS, and we thank God for this privilege of working for him. And, and we're going to have you another song and get into the Word of God in a few minutes. And hope it'll be a blessing to you in Jesus' sweet name. He was more than a fire. Today. And I'm going to ask the good saints of God now to have your Bible ready. I'm continuing in my message I've been speaking on, especially now concerning the works of the devil 
And truly, children, it's going to really take the mind of Christ to know the real works of Satan in these last days because the Bible does teach in the book of Second Thessalonians that Satan's being loosed with delusions and, and all kinds of lying signs and wonders. So we need to really be prepared at all times to face the enemy. And today I'm going to be continuing to ask you to turn with me. First of all, I'm going to read some in a few minutes out of the book of Job maybe. But right now let me read you something out of the book of First Peter about the fifth chapter and verse about six. And listen now what Peter began to write to us. He said, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And the Bible said that the adversary was walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now, Satan works in many ways through spirits. And also, as I read you before, he works in men because Jesus warned us to beware of men that come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they're raving in wolves. And also, Satan is a father of lies. But the Bible said, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions that are accomplished in your brethren, that are accomplished in the world. Now, you read all of this when you get time, but I'm just showing you a little bit about the works of the devil and let's go back, if you will, to the book of Job now. And I'm going to begin in chapter 1 the way that the same devil and adversary begin to try to destroy Job. In the book of uh, Job, the first chapter, listen to it now, as I begin about verse 1. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright one that feared God and eschewed evil, which meant he stayed away from it and avoided it. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. Notice that. 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons, Job's son, went and feasted in their houses. Every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus did Job continually. So he was constantly worrying and praying for his children. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So children, you need to realize, now that devil is not in a big hole somewhere, but he's a walking to and fro upon this earth, and his job is to try to deceive, uh, deceive and to kill, destroy, and do everything that he can against God. 
Now, that's why he's called the adversary. And God began to say to him, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man, and upright, and one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So what the devil is telling God, you've shielded him good. You've protected him. And you've not only that, but you've kept him and prospered him in his works. So children, that shows you now that what Peter meant, cast your care upon him, the Lord, because he does care for you. See, even Jesus told us to fear not. Because a lot of the Gentile world, they're more busy seeking after the material things. And the Lord tells a Christian now that he knows you have need of these things. So he tells us to seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he'll add all these things unto you. So what God is telling Job here, or Satan rather, that God has hedged him in and about his house, and all that he has. Now, Satan's telling the Lord this. And you've blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. Now, what the devil's doing here is trying to tempt God like Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Now, but this time God knowed that his confidence would work with Job. So what happened? And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now, watch this. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters, Job's, were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said the oxen were plowing. Notice this. The oxen were plowing. The asses feeding beside themselves. And the sabans fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, now listen how pressured the devil put up on Job. Now, children, that's exactly the meaning that Jesus, as we read in the book of James, and, and, and begin to let us know that the friendship of this world is an enemy of God. And any time people think that they're going to do good by doing wrong, then I'm afraid they're being deceived by the devil. Because Jesus said he's a liar, there's no truth in him, he's a thief, come on, he's a murderer, and children, he has no conscience. It don't bother the devil to see six million killed or two or three killed. It don't bother him a bit. Now, we need to realize that God always protected his children, and he still does. Well, watch what happened here. And while he was yet speaking, the man telling Job what had happened concerning his children and his oxen and so forth, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fall of God is fallen from heaven, and has burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, 
and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Now, look at this. While he was yet speaking, everything happening sudden, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the earth, or the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose. Now, this is after he lost his children. Job arose, rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground and worshipped. See, he didn't charge God. He didn't try to blame God. Honey, a lot of people, when they get mad in anger, they'll threaten God, they'll tempt to, or, or tell the Lord they're going to quit and all this and that, and most of them do. But children, God's not behind a lot of things that people fall. We're going to have to learn to put the armor on to be able to stand in this evil day. We're going to have to fight that good battle of faith. So what did Job do? The Bible said he arose, rent his mantle, shaved his, shaved his head, fell down on the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job sinned not, neither charged God foolishly. Now that's a faithful man. But watch what happened. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now children, this is not talking about angels of God. When it called them sons, that's exactly what they were, sons of God. And what was happening? When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, just as though you'd go in your closet, or you go in the back room somewhere and start kneeling on your knees and praying and worshiping God, you better believe the old devil's hanging around somewhere. And he's going to fight at you, tempt you, tell you all kind of things that God won't hear, or maybe try to get your mind on something else. Children, we've got to realize he's a spirit. And we have to wrestle against the principalities and the powers and the wicked spirits of this world. But children, there's victory in the Lord. So watch what happened now. And there was a day when the sons of God came in to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Now watch this. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan said, or answered, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Now isn't that what I read you Peter said? Your adversary the devil walketh about. See? And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and escheweth evil. Now look how God was uh, bragging on Job. Children, notice that. And the devil, of course, was definitely against Job as well as against God. Now, Job found favor with God just exactly like Noah did. Noah was a righteous man, and God decided even though he's going to destroy the world, he's going to save Noah and his family. So God had the ark prepared. Now, what's this. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. And that's about true. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee 
to thy face. Now, children, I want to show you something. That devil is very much limited. Now, you and me, we can't work in God without permission of God. Anytime we desire spiritual gifts or works of the Spirit, then we have to receive permission for them works to work within us, just like Jesus, when He chose the apostles, the Bible said He gave them power over all the power of the enemy. And also when Jesus chose the 70, He gave them authority. And if you remember, they come back rejoicing, saying, Well, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. So, children, what I'm wanting to show you, everything we do for God or in God, we must be permitted to do it by God. Well, here's a devil, and he began to tell God, If you will put forth your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, he will curse thee to thy face. Now, what is the devil telling the Lord here? If you will, Lord, if you'll put forth the hand. Now, Satan knew what he was saying. And what he was saying to God, if you will allow me, then I'll touch his bone and his flesh. So that shows you Satan don't have the control without God's permission. I'm talking about to Christians. Because we got the victory if we're serving the Lord. Now watch what happened. So Satan said, put forth thine hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he'll curse thee to thy face. Now watch verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he's in thine hand but save his life. In other words, God told the devil, go ahead and try him, but you can't touch his life. Now watch what happened. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. Now listen to that again. Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. He did, the devil with sore balls from the sole of his foot under his crown. The devil did that, only by permission. And he took him a pot, sure Job did, to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. His own little wife seen him in that condition, and she began to say, Do you still retain your integrity, your honesty? Curse God and die. All she was saying was, Give it up, Job, and go on out of here. Well, watch what happened. But he said unto her, Thou speaketh as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall not we receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. God help us. Listen to that. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came, every one from his own place, Ephaz and Temanite, and Bildad, the Shunite, and Zophar, the Naamanite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. Now watch verse 12. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off, and knew him not, they lifted up their voices and wailed. And they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights. And none spoke a word unto him, for they saw his grief was very great. Now children, by reading this, this ought to show you 
that the devil will kill you. Honey, he's behind all of these drugs. He's behind all of this alcohol and anything that destroys your body. Children, you better believe the devil's behind all that because he wants people destroyed from God. Now, watch what happened. So the devil in verse 4 said to the Lord, Yea, skin for skin. Yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. And if you'll notice, notice verse 5, Satan told the Lord, But, talking to the Lord, Put forth your hand, touch his bone, his flesh, and he'll curse you to your face. Well, if you'll study this out, God did allow that adversary, the devil, to tempt Job. But children, that shows you plainly that the only power the devil has is what we give and what he gets permission to try us with. Now let's go back a little bit to the book of Matthew, or book of Luke rather, and let me show you, I believe it's about the 10th chapter, and listen to what Jesus began to teach to his disciples concerning his power that would be power over the enemy, power over the devil. Now, first of all, if you read it and get time, Matthew 10, then read Luke chapter 10, Jesus called him other 70. After choosing 12 apostles, he chose him 70 more and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. And then Jesus began to tell them to beware. See? Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. He always warned them, children, that there was power out there that would try to devour them and destroy them. Now, listen to what he said here. In the 17th verse of Luke 10, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, Jesus, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, watch verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power, that's permission, that's authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, children, that's to the people that got the power over the enemy. Now, when you see people professing signs, gifts, and miracles, and they're getting hurt and they're getting damaged, then we need to know what the problem is. Because Jesus told his disciples, and I'm sure it's as good for us today, that I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then Jesus told them, Notwithstanding in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. See, that's the greatest, is to know that our name is written in glory with him. And the only way you're going to know that, children, is through that new birth by being born of the Spirit of God. See? When you're born of God, you become God's son or daughter. God puts that Spirit within you. And children, that's your safety. That's your protection. That's what gives you power, thank God, over all the powers of the enemy, is by obedience to the Spirit of God. Now, let's go a little bit to the book of Revelation, first of all, about the 12th chapter, and listen to what God began to tell us concerning the devil. In the book of Revelation, in your Bible, chapter 12. Now watch this, children. Revelation chapter 12, and read it all when you get time, but let me read you what it tells you here in verse about 12. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe 
to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now, later on I'm going to be showing you a little bit about the thousand year binding authority. And when you study your Bible, there's a kingdom of God, and then there's a kingdom of the devil. I'm going to be honest or the world, and both kingdoms live on the same earth, and both of them go to church. Now that's what I'm going to be taking us into today, because God had already told Eve, remember, that I'm putting enmity between you, Eve, and the serpent. Between thy seed, the serpent seed, and her seed, the church. One is representing Christ, the Word of God. That's God's seed. The other is talk, talking about a corruptible lifestyle. And that's the Word itself. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. All of these things, children, make up a corruptible seed. And that's why Peter said, being born again, not of a corruptible, thank God, but of an incorruptible seed. Now, listen to this right quick. In Revelation chapter 12, what the Bible said. Revelation chapter 12, children, and listen to what he said. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath because he knows that he hath but a short time. Now what's this part? Let me drop up here a minute. In verse about 11. And they overcome him by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Children, you will never get the victory over the devil and over his sources until we can get victory in Jesus. Till we can get victory and deliverance from the Lord over every situation, every part of our body, from our mind to our soul to our feet. Until we get victory in God, it's hard to have any power over the enemy. And that's why these little disciples had to give it all up for the Lord. And what did the Bible say in Revelation 12 verse 11? They overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. See, that's God's people. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, you that dwell in them. Now listen on. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. So we're going to be showing you how Satan come down when he was exalting himself above God. And children, he is called the God of this world, but he's a limited source. Only God has no limits. But God has to allow, thank God, his word to fulfill children. And that means now, you've got to get that armor of God on that we can stand. Now, we're going to be reading you some here concerning some of the parables that represented God's children but yet some represented the children of the devil. And until we can realize there's two classes of people, now I'm not talking about your everyday sinner, two classes of people that go to church. What are you talking about, preacher? There's the true born-again seed that's not corruptible, and then there's what the Bible calls the children of the wicked one. And they're born of corruptible seed, traditions, doctrines of men. And both of them go to church and claim to prophesy, heal, cast out devils. 
and do many works. That's why Jesus let us know if we're going to be of the right miracle workers, healers, and believers, if we're going to be of that right bunch, then we're going to have to go with Matthew 7, where Jesus said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and do them is like unto a wise man. But them that heard but wouldn't do it, they was like the foolish man. And his souls are bundling up the wheat and the tares. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to read a little bit about this parable of the wheat and tares. Now, remember I told you before, the wheat is representing the children of God. The tares is representing the children of the wicked one. And the enemy that sowed them was the devil. And he sowed his seed right among God's seed. Both in the same world. You see, Christianity's on earth, the heavenly place of God's worship on earth. But Satan's transformed himself as an angel. He's got his ministers. And now he's uh, trying his best with everything in him to be a perfect imitation to the Holy Ghost. But how do we know the difference? The real Holy Ghost only confirms the Word. These other spirits will confirm about anything. And this is what I'm going to be showing you now. How that Satan, being a father, has children. See, he's called the father, the god of this world. And he's got power behind him to deceive, if possible, even the very elected Jesus warned us. So let's go a little bit to the book of Matthew, and we'll speak a little bit about these things. Read it all when you get time, because Jesus did a lot of works in parables, illustrations using the kind of the works of the world and comparing them with his. Like a sower and planting a seed and so forth. All of this is comparison to his kingdom. Well, let's go now a little bit to the book of Matthew 13. And I'll start, and you can read it all when you get time. I'll start at verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, Jesus, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now notice this. He sowed what? Good seed in his field. Now we're going to show you the good seed as well as the field. And you've got to also realize the word of God is a seed. Now watch this. But while men slept, his enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. See there? Sowed the tares, planted them right beside the wheat. Now, when both grow up together, even in the natural realm, the, the tares look exactly almost like the wheat until they come to the head and they're black on top. And that's a lot representing their dangers and poisons of these tires. And children, if we partake of another gospel another way, we try to allow teachings in the pulpit that's contrary to the Word of God and we know it, honey, we're just like that tire. We're about to come to the sin. Now, listen to what God said. This is a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came, you listening? His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and just went his way. Satan won't hang around. But when the blade was sprung up, time of the harvest, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder, now, when the harvest time's ready, and I believe she's there now, you're going to see us separating. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did thou not sow then good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tars? Well, watch this. And he, Jesus, said unto them, 
An enemy has done this. An enemy. A devil. The servant said unto him, Will thou we then go and gather them up? You want us just to get them out of here? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. So he said, Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first. First, gather them together, the tares. And bind them in bundles, and burn them, but gather the wheat in my barn. So you see, this is your harvest time of coming. And when Jesus was speaking these parables, honey, he was letting you and me know that there are many adversaries out here, as well as many spirits that's under the rule of the devil. Now, we're going to let Jesus explain this to you. You read it all, Matthew 13, when you get time, but let me show you what he began to expound this to the disciples. All right, now read it all when you get time. So Jesus explained it in verse 37. He that soweth the good seed is a son of man. See? The good seed, the Bible said, was sowed by the Son of Man. The field, where he put them, is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, kingdom of God. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. And the enemy that sowed them is the devil. Could you get any plainer than that? The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. Now, this is something I need to show you a little bit about. Jesus spoke this parable and said the kingdom of heaven it's like that man that sowed good seed in his field. The field is the world. But while men slept, children study this out. Preachers have been doing a lot of sleeping on God, hiding the truth. Anymore it's nothing but seeking prosperity. But what did the Bible say while men slept? The enemy came in and sowed among the wheat tares and went his way. So, who was that enemy? The devil. But, verse 26, when the blade was sprung up, the blade came out of the ground, then there appeared the tares also. Now, what this interpretation of this parable is, the reapers is not only the angels coming together together, but God's going to get his ministers like a flaming fire. And they're not going to compromise, they're going to gather together his elect, and get them ready for these days. But children, listen to me. There's also a binding together of the tires. They're coming together. And you better believe they're on the wrong road. So what did the Bible say here? Watch this. So the servants of the householder came, said unto him, Sir, did thou not sow good seed? in thy field. So what is the good seed? Well, let's drop down here and find out what the good seed is. What's this now? Just bear with me while I'm getting it hunted here. Verse 37 again. He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. Well, what is the good seed? The children of the kingdom. So the kingdom is in the world, but it's not of the world. The church is the kingdom. Remember, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again to enter the kingdom. So is God kingdom here today? You better believe it. But it's not a worldly kingdom. It's from above. It's a Holy Ghost. And you have to be born again to get in it. Well, where did God put the children of the kingdom? Of course, in the kingdom upon earth. 
just like he's going to tell you here. He that sowed the good seed or the children of God is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. See there? But the tares are the children of the wicked one, which I read is the devil. The enemy that sowed them, that sowed these children of the wicked one, that enemy is the devil. The harvest now is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. So what God is saying here, when they said, Sir, will thou that we go and take the tires away from the wheat? But the Lord said, let them both grow together. Didn't say let them both agree together or bleed together, but grow in the same field of the world. Let both grow together. Until when? Till the harvest. Now, if you read 2 Thessalonians, it proves to you that God is gathering together right now in this harvest. First, not His people, the tares. And get them all bundled, ready to be bound together, prepared for far. Now that's what He's telling you. Ready? Let both grow together, not in the church, but in the world. Until the...